So thanks for the introduction. So I'm going to talk about leakage resilience, secret sharing, and applications. And this is based on joint work with Prashant Nalini Vasudevan. So let me uh, start the talk by giving you a brief overview of threshold secret sharing. Uh, so as you might all be aware, it was introduced in the seminal works of Shamir and Blackley in the late 70s. And in this setting, there is a dealer who has a secret message M, and he wants to split this secret uh, into N shares, SH1 to SHN, with some threshold parameter T. The dealer then sends the IH share SHI to party PI. So we require a threshold secret sharing to satisfy two properties. The first is the correctness property, which states that any group of T or more parties can come together, use their shares to reconstruct the secret message M. And the second property is the secrecy property, which states that any adversary who's corrupting at most T minus one parties learns no information about the secret message. So threshold secret sharing is a fundamental cryptographic primitive with uh, numerous applications. Some of the applications include constructing secure multi-party computation protocols, constructing threshold cryptographic primitives, and so on. And the security of all these applications crucially rely on the secrecy property of the underlying secret sharing scheme. So the question we would like to address today is that, what if the adversary, in addition to corrupting T minus one parties, also learn some partial information about the harness party shares. So this information could be leaked to the adversary via some side channels that it might have uh, on the storage devices of the harness parties. So the privacy property that I just mentioned does not give any guarantees under this stronger adversarial model, and hence we, and hence we need a stronger notion of security in order to capture this. So this was done by two independent works, one by Benham Uda et al, which appeared in crypto last year, and other by Goel and Kumar, uh, that appeared in stock 2018. And they introduced this notion called as leakage resilient secret sharing. So leakage resilient secret sharing is just like any other threshold secret sharing, satisfying the correctness property. In addition, the privacy property is now strengthened to something called as leakage resilience. So this states that any adversary who's corrupting at most T minus one parties learns no information about the underlying secret message M, even when given some bounded leakage from the other shares. So let's see the formal definition. So the formal definition is modeled as a game between an adversary and a challenger. So the challenger first generates the sharing of some secret message M, and let's call the shares to be SH1 to SHN. The adversary now gives a set T, which denotes the set of corrupted parties, as well as some leakage functions, FIs, to be applied on the harness party shares. So we require two properties. The first is that the size of the uh, set T, which denotes the number of corrupted parties, that should be less than or equal to T minus one. The second property is that the output length of this uh, function FI should be bounded. So notice that if we allow the output length of these functions to be arbitrary, then the, the, out, the function's output length could be as long as the share size. And if the, identity, and the functions are just identity functions, then the adversary gets all the information about uh, the secret. So here we cannot hope to uh, give any sort of privacy. And hence, we need to restrict the output length of these leakage functions to have some bounded length. However, notice that we do not place any restrictions on the computational complexity of these leakage functions. So these leakage functions could be arbitrary as long as they have a bounded output length. So given this, the challenger now sends back the shares corresponding to the corrupted parties, as well as the output of these leakage functions applied on the harness party shares. So at the end, we require the adversary, given even this additional information, not to learn any, inform, uh, any uh, information about the secret message M. Okay, so this is the formal definition. And let me give you a brief overview of the prior work in this area. So uh, Guru Swami and Wouters in 2017 showed that Shamir secret sharing, when instantiated over finite fields with characteristic two, is not leakage resilient. That is, they showed an explicit reconstruction strategy that allows an adversary to uh, obtain the entire secret given some partial information from all the shares. In uh, interesting work, uh, Ben Hamuda et al. showed that uh, Shamir's secret sharing, when instantiated over a large prime order field, is in fact leakage resilient for thresholds t greater than or equal to n minus n to the one fourth. And uh, in the work of Goel and Kumar, they gave a different construction of leakage resilient secret sharing scheme for the constant thresholds case. 
So as you can see, there is a huge gap uh, which is left. So the first question that we would like to address is that can we construct a leakage resilient secret sharing scheme for all thresholds? And the second question is that can we extend it to for all monotone access structures? So in this uh, work, we resolve this question. So we uh, show a compiler that takes any uh, secret sharing scheme for a monotone access structure A with some rate R, and it converts it into a leakage resilient secret sharing scheme for the same access structure with the following properties. The first property is that the rate of the resultant secret sharing scheme is only a constant multiplicative factor worse than the rate of the original sharing scheme. That is the rate of the leakage resilient secret sharing is R over 3.01. And the second property is that the leakage resilience rate, which is defined to be the ratio of the number of bits leaked to the share size, can be made to be arbitrarily close to one. So this in turn implies that even if we leak almost 99% of the share size, we can uh, show, uh, we can prove security. And uh, in the next talk, you'll hear from Mark about, uh, con uh, about their construction, which also gives such a compiler. Okay, so as an application of our compiler, we show how to construct a constant rate non-malleable secret sharing scheme in the information theoretic setting. So as um, you heard in the first talk, non-malleable secret sharing is just like any other threshold secret sharing scheme. That is, it satisfies the correctness and the secrecy properties. It also satisfies this additional non-malleability property, which roughly states that any tampering attack on the shares either preserves the original secret or completely destroys it. So this notion was introduced in the work of Goel and Kumar in 2018, and it can be thought of as a generalization of this uh, uh, notion of non-malleable codes. And a question that was left open in their work was to construct a constant rate non-malleable secret sharing in the information theoretic setting. So what we show uh, in this work is that if we plug in our leakage resilient secret sharing with the non-malleable secret sharing compiler of Badri Narayanan and myself that appeared in Eurocrypt this year, we can in fact get a constant rate uh, threshold non-malleable secret sharing for uh, threshold T greater than or equal to four. And uh, in the next talk, you'll also hear about uh, uh, giving a stronger notion of non-malleable secret sharing from this leaky resilient secret sharing, and I, would, uh, I hope that Mark will be uh, able to uh, give these details. So as another application, we also uh, give a leakage-tolerant multi-party computation for general interaction patterns, but unfortunately, I wouldn't have time to go into the details, and I would encourage you to look into our paper. Okay, so in the rest of the talk, uh, I'll focus on the threshold case. I'll give you a construction of uh, leaky resilient secret sharing that has a constant rate, but uh, the rate would be uh, small, uh, uh, it would be worse than the promised via compiler. And also the leakage resilience rate that uh, our construction satisfied would be worse but, uh, than the optimum of one, but it's still a constant. So this is, uh, these simplifications are just for the purpose of this talk. Okay, so, uh, so let's start with the construction. So let's say that we want to uh, secret share a message M. So the first step in a construction is to just uh, split this uh, message M into N shares using Shamir secret sharing. So here we do not assume any leakage resilience property from the underlying Shamir secret sharing scheme. Okay, so let's assume that uh, each of these uh, Shamir shares is uh, in a finite field F. The next step is to choose a random vector r from f to the k, where k is some constant. Okay, so once you choose this r, you then uh, choose a random vector l1 from f to the k, such that the inner product of l1 with this r is equal to the first Shami share SS1. Then you do this for the uh, next one as well, so you choose a random vector l2, such that the inner product of L2 with the same R is the second Shamir share SS2 and so on. So you choose L3 up to Ln such that the inner product with R is the corresponding Shamir share. Okay, so thus you obtain L1 to Ln and this is the second step. So the final step is to take this uh, uh, vector R and you then split it uh, into N uh, shares R1 to Rn using Shamir secret sharing now over F to the K. Okay, so the share corresponding to the ith party will be uh, li comma ri. 
Okay, so this is the secret sharing scheme. So how do we uh, reconstruct? You first, uh, given any T shares, you can use the Shami secret sharing to reconstruct this R. Then you take the inner product with the corresponding LIs to get the uh, T Shami shares of M. And then you use the uh, reconstruction uh, of Shamir again to get the secret message. So this is how the reconstruction works. So the interesting point is that how do we show that it is in fact uh, secure against uh, in the leakage model? So for the purpose of this talk, let's assume that the, uh, the, the final T minus one shares are revealed in the clear. This corresponds to the set T. And there is some arbitrary leakage function acting on the rest of the shares. So this is just for the purpose of this talk. Uh, so the, the proof actually follows from um, several uh, observations. So the first observation is that each individual leakage function f does not learn any information about the secret vector r that was chosen in the sharing phase. So to see why this is the case, notice that each of these uh, fi's just looks at one of these ri's. And since ri is in fact a Shamir share of r, it hides all the information about r. So one can roughly think about the leakage function acting solely on the vector Li's. So this is the first observation that the Fi of Li comma Ri, uh, Fi does not get any information about R. So the second observation is that the output of this leakage function Fi of Li comma Ri hides all information about the Shami share SSI. Okay, so to see why this is the case, Notice that inner product acts as a strong two source extractor. So even given some bounded leakage on one of the sources, here one of the sources is Li, the inner product of Li with uh, the other source, as, uh, which is R, has sufficient entropy. So this can be formalized to show that Fi of Li comma Ri hides all information about the underlying Shami share SSI. So this is the second observation. And the third observation is that the only Shami shares that the adversary gets access to are those which correspond to, which are revealed in the clear. And since there are at most T minus one uh, revealed shares, though uh, it follows from the uh, privacy of the Shami secret sharing of M, that these T minus one shares hide information about it. So this is the rough intuition behind the proof. Of course, there are lots of subtleties involved. And I would encourage you to look into the paper for the exact details. So to conclude, uh, the main uh, uh, result in our paper is to give a compiler that uh, converts a secret sharing scheme for a monotone access structure A to a leaky resilient secret sharing scheme for the same access structure with the following properties. So it has a constant factor degradation in the rate. Uh, and it has optimal leakage resilience rate. And uh, we gave applications of, uh, to constructing constant rate non-malleable secret sharing in the information theoretic setting, as well as uh, 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 application to constructing leakage tolerant MPC protocols for restricted interaction patterns. And uh, in a concurrent and an independent work, Kumar, Meka, and Sahai gave a stronger notion of leakage resilience property, and they actually gave interesting constructions based on uh, connections to communication complexity. So an interesting open question would be to find other applications of uh, leakage resilience secret sharing schemes. And uh, that's it. Thank you for your attention. Mark Simkin will continue the presentation. Ah, okay. All right, so I'm going to present a um, our paper, which deals with a very similar topic to the paper that we just heard about, so this is stronger leakage resilient and non malleable secret sharing for general access structures, and this is a paper, joint work with Divish Agarwal, Ivan Damgard, Jesper Booth Nielsen, Machi Obremski, Eric Provanto, Zhao uh, Ribeiro, and me. And um, yes, so we like already heard like what is non malleable secret sharing, what is leakage resilient secret sharing in the previous talk. So um, I'm kind of going to focus on the things that you didn't hear so much yet. Um, so non-mailable secret sharing, as you heard before, was introduced um, 
quite recently, but like a lot of papers deal with this problem. And the idea is again that you have some file and you secret share it, like you compute a bunch of shares. And um, now the adversary can somehow tamper with each file independently, uh, with each share independently. And what we would like is that the reconstructed secret from the tampered shares is either the same as it was before or it is completely unrelated. Okay, so we want to prevent that it is transformed into a related message. And um, the first notion dealt with the case of a single tampering and like a minimal uh, reconstruction set. And what we do in this work is that we um, extend this non malleability notion to something that we call concurrent reconstruction. And the idea is that um, in this case, the adversary cannot specify um, like one set of tempering, not one vector of tempering functions, but several vectors of tempering functions. And um, so he does this in a non-adaptive way, which is uh, in contrast to the paper that Antonio presented. So here he like, has to specify all of the vectors at once. And then the, the secret sharing uh, at the top will basically be thrown into these tempering functions. And then even we can uh, use different reconstruction sets here, which are again chosen non-adaptively by the adversary. Uh, we reconstruct with different reconstruction sets to get different uh, kind of corrupted secrets. And again, we want to have the property that all of those secrets are, so that for any one of those secrets, it's either the same one as it was before or it is completely unrelated, okay? And um, yes, okay, so what we do in our paper is basically, so kind of abstractly speaking, like we construct like leakage resilient secret sharing, we construct non malleable secret sharing, but the general idea of how to construct all of them follows the same kind of blueprint. So what we will end up doing is we will take a secret sharing scheme and we will take some encoding function and we will like mingle them together. And then depending on which encoding function you plug in, you will get either leakage resilience or you will get non malleability. So it's kind of like a general simple approach of how to do these things. Um, Yes, so we get leakage resilience. For, so, and all of this is for general access structures and with information theoretic security. And um, yes, yeah, so our non malleable secret sharing will be for three monotone uh, general access structures. So that means that uh, th any authorized set has at least size three. And then we use, um, again, basically the same approach to show that you can also build something which we'll call leakage or non malleable um, threshold signatures, which I'll like, skim over at, towards the end of the talk. And in comparison to the previous talk, what we basically have is that uh, both, um, so both the non malleable secret sharing and the leakage resilient secret sharing that we construct has a, sign like a worse rate than the constructions from the previous talk. But in comparison to the previous talk, we achieve a stronger security notion for our non malleable secret sharing. So this is kind of how the two papers complement each other. Um, okay, so kind of on a very high level, what we have is we're given some secret sharing for um, some access structure. And what we would like now to do is we would like to take those shares and somehow uh, re-encode them into new, share, into new shares such that we get like the leakage resilience and non-malleability properties. And what we, um, yes. And what we want, what we will basically do is think of like we have some encoding function which takes each one of those shares and it will produce two different shares, okay? And then again, we will plug in different encoding functions to get different things. So what we simply do is we will take each of those shares and we will split it into two shares with this encoding function. And now we will redistribute the shares accordingly uh, as follows. So originally the first share was this, and now the new first share will be this vector of shares, okay? So what does this, it? what is this? It will be the green one of the first share and then all of the other red ones, okay? Um, and for the second share, it will be like the green one of the second one and then all of the red ones from the other ones. And we'll continue doing this. Now if, um, we want to reconstruct, say we have this first and the second share, then we can um, combine those two and those two uh, to reconstruct the original two shares. And then if this is kind of like, if the access structure allows these two shares to reconstruct the secret, then the whole co construction will kind of reconstruct the secret, okay? And note that kind of if this encoding in some sense requires that you definitely need both of those parts to reconstruct what you encoded, then for the third share, for the fourth share, for the fifth share, you'd never have the green part, okay? So you, like, uh, they know exactly, they can exactly decode the two shares that they are supposed to decode. Um, yes, and the other important thing is that every one of the green shares is held exactly by one party, okay? So 
Yeah, it's a very obvious statement. That's one party that has H green share. Um, so now the question is, what do we do? What encoding do we use um, to obtain different secret sharing schemes? Um, so let's start with non-leakage uh, resilient secret sharing, and it's in the same model as before. So we basically can independently leak from each share, and we would like to um, uh, ensure that the secret remains hidden even when the adversary sees the leakage. Okay. So what we will use is basically a strong seeded extractor, which is a primitive that it uh, takes this, like a uniformly random seed as input, some high min entropy uh, string, so a string, yeah, that has a lot of entropy, and um, when you apply the extractor, you will get something that looks uniform or is close to uniform, okay? And um, the strong here means that even if the seed is revealed, uh, this still looks close to uniformly random. And another property that we will need for our construction is that this uh, extractor also has something that is called pre efficient pre-image sampling. So that means that if I have something here, I can efficiently find some uniformly random inputs uh, or close to uniformly random inputs that will, if the extractor is applied to it, give me that output, okay? Um, and what we now simply do is to encode one of those original secret shares, we will apply this inverse of the extractor to obtain these two things. Um, so basically one of those will be the seed and one of those will be the high min entropy sample. And like as we've seen from the previous samples, uh, from the pre previous slides, the jth share will then be kind of a bunch of the red ones and one of the green ones. Um, th th this will compose the new share. And if we look what this means here is we will basically have one of those things will be this long uh, sample and the rest of those will be the short seeds, which will in total compose the new share of our leakage resilient secret sharing scheme. And the intuition why this is a leakage resilient secret sharing scheme is that even if the adversary gets to leak pretty much all of the red shares, as I said before, the green share is only held by one part, like each of the green shares is only held by one party, okay? And what this just says is that this just has to be some high main entropy sample, so that means that if after leaking some of its bits, there's still a lot of entropy left, then he cannot do anything based on the properties of the extractor, okay? Um, and we all, like by plugging in a different uh, encoding scheme, we almost immediately get non malleable secret sharing, we just need to make some small tweaks. So the one thing that we need to prevent if we, uh, if we want to have non malleable secret sharing is that um, in the construction that I said before, whatever encoding scheme we use, it doesn't prevent that the adversary could just override a share with some default value, okay? So in this case, the adversary could just go and override the, the second share here with some de default value. And this could potentially um, lead to a reconstruction here that uh, reconstructs to related secret, to get like a, a, if you want to think of a very simple example, think of um, a modified Shamir, Shamir secret sharing, okay? Like, Imagine you have Shamir secret sharing and you are given a non-minimal uh, authorized set. Now what, what this modified Shamir secret sharing scheme could do is it could say, okay, I will take a minimal authorized set and reconstruct a secret and then I will have a special kind of share and for every occurrence of this special share, I will add plus one to the reconstructed secret. So in this case, if I had this kind of artificial secret sharing scheme, I could override this thing here with this special share and this would result in this constructing a related secret, okay? So this is kind of an artificial example, but the compiler has to deal with all kinds of secret sharing schemes. Uh, but this problem is solved in a very simple fashion, so we just add a nonce to every share, so now rather than encoding the first share, the second share, and so on, we just pick an additional nonce R, and then this encoding will basically be the first share concatenated with R, and so on. And the reconstruction function is modified accordingly, that it reconstructs the blue shares, and if the nonces are not consistent, then it will abort, and otherwise it will reconstruct the secret. Because now, if you were to override a share, you would need to somehow know R, which you don't. So this is kind of why the, um, this nonce prevents this attack. Um, and I won't go into details like what encoding scheme you have to use, but basically, it's similar to the encoding scheme that I just showed you for the leakage resilient secret sharing, just that it's kind of, it has kind of some extra non malleability properties, and then these non malleability properties directly transfer to the secret sharing scheme that we construct. Um, and then pretty much the same trick that like, we did throughout like, this talk so far, you can also apply it to get something that we call thresh, um, leakage resilient or non malleable threshold signatures. 
So what you just do is, so in a threshold signature scheme, you have a key pair, and um, the, the key is split into a bunch of secret, like uh, key shares, and all of those key shares can be used to sign mes messages, and then these uh, signature algorithms produce signature shares, and from these signature shares, I can basically uh, construct a signature for the message that will verify under this public key. And then we introduce non-mailable secret sharing, uh, non-mailable threshold signatures where we require that even if kind of the adversary man is allowed to tamper once with the vector of um, secret keys, and afterwards he's allowed to query uh, for um, signatures on messages of his choice, he should still not break the enforceability guarantee. And um, in a similar fashion, we get something for leakage resilience. So here, he, there are the secret keys. The adversary gets to see some leakage on all of those keys. And again, then like in a chosen message uh, type of security notion, he should not be able to forge a message. So um, I won't go into detail how we construct it, but basically the constructions are kind of similar to what I showed before of how to distribute the secret key, like how to split the secret, the secret shares or the secret keys at this point and how to distribute them among the players. So um, with this, we kind of get leakage resilient and non-noble threshold signatures. Yes, questions? have time for questions and both authors will be on stage to answer them. As you ponder yours, I have one of mine. Um, can you speak of uh, applications of your scheme and how close we are in terms of concrete parameters to being suitable for these applications? Um. <laughs> Let me think about practicality. Uh. I th so the main issue with this to answer this, uh, why for me it's a hard question to answer is because like, I'm not sure what you would consider a practical parameters for the, for instance, the threshold signature scheme. Like uh, for like reasonable values of n, I think it is, like you get like, you get somewhat larger secret keys than you have in the original threshold signature scheme, but they're not uh, extremely large. Like I, I think this could be like practical if you, if you wanted to do something like this. Any other questions? Well, let's thanks, thank all the speakers of the session. Yeah.